In this video, I'll be talking about extrema for functions of two variables. Uh, so let, let me begin by talking about local extrema, so the concepts of local maximum and local minimum. These are just points where a function, well, a function has a local max at a point if, if its values near that point uh, are all smaller than the point in question. Uh, maybe I should write some details. So. So we're talking about extrema of functions of two variables and a local max, a local maximum value, I should maybe say, of a function is a point AB with the property that, well, um, the value of the function at that point, so I should, the local maximum is the value of the function and it occurs at some point and what this means is that f at a, b is bigger than or equal to the value of the function for x, y near a, b. And a more precise way of saying near is that, well, there's some disk containing the point a, b, and on that disk, uh, f of a, b is bigger than the values of the function on the disk. Uh, well, what it really means is that if you think of the graph of the function, it means you're at a hilltop on the function, but you're not necessarily at the largest value of the function possible. It just means it's the largest value nearby. And we also have a concept of a local min. So a local min occurs at a, b if the function the function's value at that point is less than or equal to the values of the function for x, y near a, b. And where calculus comes into play is that let's say we have a local max or min, so if a, b is a local max or min. Uh, something we can say is that, well, this function f of uh, f of x comma b as a function of one variable has to have a local max. So as a function of x, this has a local max or min, depending on what case we're in, at x equals a. So what that, if you remember for one variable, if a function is differentiable and it has a local max or min somewhere, its derivative there has to be zero because it has a horizontal tangent. So what I'm saying here is that in this case, the partial of f with respect to x, which is the derivative of this function at a, b will be zero if we're at a local max or min. And the same argument with the function f of a comma y will show you that if we're at a local max or min, the partial with respect to y also has to equal zero. So let's pay attention to what's happening here. If we have a local max or min, then both partial derivatives are zero, assuming they exist. So let me write that out. Local max or min at a, b implies both partials equal zero, assuming these exist. And, well, let me mention just right out of the box that if you know both partial derivatives equal zero, it is not the case that you have a local max or min. At a, b, 
but why this is good is because the this gives us a way to find a list of candidates for local maxes and mins because if we find all of the possible points where both of these partial derivatives are equal to zero we will know that any local maxes or mins will be in that list sort of the interesting thing is that there could be some extra points thrown in that satisfy both of these things but are not actually local maxes or mins and those are called saddle points but first maybe I should mention points that satisfy this or where derivatives don't exist points with either of these two properties are called critical points and again critical points just give you a list of candidates for local extrema. So you know that any local maxes or mins will have to be in the list of critical points, but you don't know necessarily whether any given critical point is a local max or min. You have to use sort of more refined techniques like the second derivative test, which we'll learn later. But let me do just a very simple example to illustrate these ideas. So if I just have g of x, y equals x squared plus y squared, let's find the critical points. So these are points where both partial derivatives are equal to zero. So we're solving two equations. We want to see where is this equal to zero and this is equal to zero. So we do these computations. Partial with respect to x is 2x and the partial with respect to y is 2y and for both of these to be zero has to be the case that x is zero and y is zero. So the only critical point is 0, 0. And, and like I said, it takes more work to show that, that this critical point is actually a local minimum because, well, we already know lots of things about this function because this is, the graph of this function is a paraboloid that's facing upward like that. So at 0, 0, there is definitely a local minimum. And luckily, this technique found that this was a critical point, uh, but we'll learn the second derivative test later, which will show that this is actually a local minimum. Um, well, sort of a non-example is the function h of x, y is x squared minus y squared. If you go through the same argument, the only critical point of this is 0, 0 again, but this function has what's called a saddle point, and we already know what the graph of this looks like. It's this hyperbolic paraboloid, and the graph's kind of hard to draw, but it's sort of this saddle shape. So the only critical point is 0, 0. It's not a local max or min. Instead, it's what we call a saddle point. And I will stop there.